The Valley plays host to several subcultures. One of the more unique communities is composed of fire performers, a diverse and eclectic group of self-professed pyromaniacs. The Gazette caught up with two highly active groups for a more personal perspective on fire performers from the performers themselves. Kinetic Inferno is a troupe based out of Greenfield, Massachusetts. One of their members, J. Rowe Burge of Turner's Falls, agreed to discuss his background with the Gazette during a break in their show at Raven South Deerfield. J. Rowe Burge from Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. And how long have you been doing fire performance now? About eight years. About eight years? When, what drew you to it? Like, how did you get your start? I saw a guy playing with glow sticks once upon a time, learned how to do that, and then one day he calls me up and lights up his fire point and puts them in my hands. <laughs> and yeah, then I made my own and... Basically just sit here, go for it and push in? Pretty much. So to speak? Yeah. Uh, what do you do in the, normally, you know, uh, during, your, during the day, during your day job, what is it you do? Travel festivals, work in a vending booth, spin fire. Why do you spin fire? For love. Oh, so what do you mean? The love, man. You can't describe the love. The love is the love. I noticed that you have a very, um, like, the, the style that you have is very, I don't want to say zen-like, but there's a certain quality to it when, I, when you spin. I mean, is, is that about right? Is there a certain spirituality for you? There is. It's meditation. It's meditation. It Once you lose yourself in it, you make it in 20 minutes spinning, it'll be two hours gone by before you know it. Nice. Any words of wisdom for anyone wanting to pick this up? Practice. Hundreds of hours. Now what else do you spin with? I mean, I see that you got, you've got the poi and everything, but there's some other stuff that you spin that's a little different. Pick up a toy, I'll spin it. Anything? My specialties though, of course, poi, nunchucks, um, rope dart, tanfa, those are the ones I travel with mostly. Nice. Um, I also can use a double stave. Uh, I can breathe, but I don't anymore. I can eat fire. I can use a regular staff. Um, yeah, you name it. Nice. Well, at least I'll show you something. Yeah. Amanda Silva of Greenfield is the group's founder and organizer. She holds a weekly practice for a private residence where friends and members come together to exchange ideas, brush up on skills, and enjoy the company of other fire-oriented folk. During a recent show at the Harp Irish Pub in Amherst, Massachusetts, she explains to the Gazette how Kinetic Inferno's members first became involved as a troupe at her home. How did you get 10 people here tonight? I mean, like, how did you guys all find each other? Oh boy. <laughs> how did we all find each other? Um, it, it's... Ask us individually. Well, I basically started um, with kind of it being a recreational sort of fun hobby that night that I started at my house um, and it just kind of perpetuated into people bringing other people into the group um, you know we had some people that um, you know, found us through various channels um, or met us at parties or something that we were performing at or like, I do this too or I want to learn and next thing you know, <laughs> they were part of the crew too. A spectacular segment of any fire act involves the breathing of fire into giant plumes of flame by so-called dragons. Keegan Kuvach, co-founder of Sunshine Entertainment in Amherst, Massachusetts, explains to Gazette how it feels to breathe fire, the dangers of breathing fire, and closes with some words of wisdom. Exhilarating and liberating and everything that you would imagine manipulating fire at close range would be. Um, and you know, uh, that was it. I was hooked. It's like a drug. It's, it's incredibly... Um, I, I, just, I can't think of anything... You're learning to breathe fire, right? The first time you did it, like, and it actually worked, mm -hmm. how'd that feel? I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. And again and yeah. again. Yeah, and it's just... It, I imagine there must be, like, a mix of, like, relief and, like, let's try that again. I can do that again. I can do that again. Yeah. It's like a roller coaster ride right. is, is kind of how I would say it, except me, that you were the one in control. Yeah, for me, at one point, it was uh, once a week I looked forward to blowing off some steam. Yeah. That's cool. And it was, it was really amazing, like... Knowing that I'd just done this, it just it just makes you feel powerful. And especially in a time where you're not quite sure where you're going. Like for me, I did not know where I was going. 
and you know, in, in light and my life goals and stuff. And being able to all of a sudden feel like I had this immense power. Like I had the power, basically, to look am amazingly awesome or to kill myself instantly where nobody could help me. And you know, that's a, that's a big meatball. But the, the, the bad thing is if you inhale this mist that you blow out, uh, you, it coats your lungs and you get chemical pneumonia, which nobody can help you with. Like you, it coats your lungs, your lungs collapse, and you're right. dead. And it happens within seconds, and there's nothing that anybody. Can, well, yeah, there's nothing anybody can do for you. So when you learn, you need to learn to do it right. You need to learn to breathe fire and then not inhale. Not, not, like you go, and then you don't want to. Right. In the same place where you just did this, because then you, you are done. And I've made the mistake of breathing fire and then having like a mouth coated in the lamp oil and breathing heavily through my mouth, but not actually breathing in the mist. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you got punched in the stomach. Really. Like, bad. And so is that why everyone spits afterwards? Uh, they spit afterwards because if you swallow it, you get the runs. Oh. If you swallow a little bit, you're fine. And I honestly, like, I've swallowed probably a quarter of a mouthful and been totally mm -hmm. fine. I spit it out just because it's um, just a weird texture. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah just it, like... it, it, it tastes like water, which is what makes it also dangerous, but it, it feels like oil. And it's not something... Since I, I have the benefit of being a school teacher, so mm -hmm. I know how kids take things. So <laughs> I, I know how to make them understand what's safe and what's not safe. Like, mm -hmm. you want to try juggling? Go for it. You want to play with fire? Wait till you're 18. Yeah. Wait till you're professionally trained for years. And if you absolutely have to, then try it. That said, never play with fire. <laughs> what are you not going to do? And they say, play with fire. I say, yes. <laughs> Thank you. For the Hampshire Gazette, this is Adrian Feliciano.